right. so issue the command. What's that? Yeah. Voluntary and some involuntary movement All right. of the body. So if I have this sort of, if I if I make this voluntary movement, <laughs> that, that constitutes voluntary, correct? Okay. I do heartbeat. That's involuntary. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. The part of the machine works on its own. Now you can sit there and Yeah, I got a got a 17 month old daughter who tries to do this. <laughs> I don't I don't need that card to bake very little. Just figure me what's like. Um, with this, how do you take that force of will that is in the non-physical self and say, finger, I command thee to wiggle? Well, D Descartes' answer to this, if, and those of you that have liked Descartes, <laughs> prepare, prepare for that to end now. He says, well, uh, this is a great mystery, and uh, what we have to do is we have to rely on Almighty God. He knows the thoughts of my mind and knows when I will myself to move and to walk and to go forward. And he, like a marionette, controls my, my movements. And then, you know, he lets me know through the pain. Like, that's how he... It, it's all about God. Because God, you know, the, the neurons... Well, he didn't really know much about neurons. But it's like, okay, that happens, and I feel the pain, because God knows that when this happens, then he should send me the information that, hey, you're cutting yourself, stupid. Stop it. And voila, parallelism. God commands it to happen, and it happens because he knows that, he, that you want it to happen. There's so much that you just said that I was trying to get out, but I see it. Because, like, uh, being raised in kind of a religious background, you know, our will is God's will. Okay. And that, really, we live for him, you know, so really, we have no free will of our own. Okay. And that he has to, he is in control of us. The not the other way around. A theological. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, hold on. You guys are not ready to jump into a theological debate. <laughs> and I do want to say that there is a difference between theological uh, determinism. No, see, I, I believe that I can make myself move. Okay. But, you know, at the same time, when you're raised a certain way, that your mind. I, See, I can't get that. Your mind goes back that, that there is an almighty God that, that created you, and, and the way he created you, he controls a lot of things that go around your, your, okay, yes. your life. But at this point, do you, do you say that if I, you know, if I have the will to wiggle, do you have enough free will, even within your own theological paradigm, to say that I have the free will to wiggle my head if I want to? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you think that when you have that will, God interprets that will and says, oh, crap, he doesn't have any connection between his physical and mental self, so i got to wiggle that head for him. No, not like that. That's what he's saying. That's the only way he can dig himself out of that hole. No. He didn't create, God didn't create robots. We have a free will to serve him or not serve him, and that's why some people believe in him. Interesting enough, Descartes, I, if I'm remembering the, uh, Descartes' theological predisposition properly, he believed that we have the power to reject him. He, he believed that he could say, well, I can commit murder that is not God's will, but God will, because he, God will, God, uh, God will respect my freedom to choose to disobey what he wants, will still nonetheless direct me as I, as I run him through. He sounds schizophrenic. <laughs> he sounds schizophrenic, right? It doesn't sound logical. It doesn't. So what about um, other cultures and like different gods? Do they yeah, feel I mean, the same thing? Like, for example, I don't want to knock it, but like Hinduism okay. and all that. They have different gods versus Christianity. What, if, what about them? What about their, is this philosophy for them too? Or is it just? Oh, good, good question. Excellent question. He says that, yes, this, this philosophy exists for them true. Just, they're, just they're all wrong about the way that God exists. Is that fair enough? Sure. I, I mean, I didn't say you had to like it. I'm like, this uh, is this is what. I'm just curious. No, that's you know, he's like, well, only one God exists, and so that's that's the way that this works, and it's all my and he does all this stuff, whatever, eh, whatever the pagans, the heathens believe. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I would, I, I found is that everybody is taught about God. It's not like you just hit the age of 12 and all of a sudden you're like, wow. This stuff's here because somebody else. It is this questions you have to ask, and other people give you the answer through the education that they've gotten through either the Bible or the religion they pick, you know, who, who teaches them, so it's been handed down. So, how is it that there's a perfect God, but he was told about the perfect God? 
through somebody else. You know, that he didn't just come across and automatically some one day he realized God put this, God made that, and the seventh day he took a break. I mean, that kind of thing. It just seems like he was taught that, and it's not anything that he had before then. Okay. Um, right. However, we, we raised the question, how did the very first person who had the concept of God, how did, how did, how did they receive that information? In a dream. Okay. Which was God, God working through the dream to, for that person, or was it God encountering that person encountering God in some way that hadn't been explained to them, or um, going back to the narratives? There's on that, you know, and the whole thing is just lost from a thought. Okay. Or, or they can't explain something, so they create this God that now everything is easily explained. Okay. You can't explain dreams, so it's God's way of talking to you. You can't explain, you know, certain the weather, it was God being mad. Okay. Thunderstorm. Okay, and going back into a different, different yeah, okay. Um, now was your question, how does Descartes respond to that, or? Yeah, I mean, how did that fall into the perfect God, the notion of the perfect God? Um, at this point, how does the God, okay. Can you distill your question to one or two sentences again? Because I, I, I got lost because when you said something. Okay. Um, how did he come across the perfect notion of a God if he was if he was taught about it? Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, well, that goes back to he, he, you really can't have the notion of a perfect God because you are an imperfect. You know, I, I have to be honest. I have no idea how Descartes would respond to that precisely. It's, I, I imagine, again, this is, you know, I, I have not encountered anything in my readings, in my studies of Descartes that would answer this. What you're getting is an educated guess. Are you, are you content with that? Sure. Okay. I, I want to be honest about things that I need. It just seems like it went from I think, therefore I am, to there's a God, and there's no way that anybody else told me about it that I know about it. I just know it's there. But I've never heard okay. of anybody that's, like, been away and all of a sudden on an island or by themselves. Okay, oh, that change. Okay, so that changes the dynamic of something a bit. Okay, there is a difference for Descartes. How did I come about a place of faith? One, I, I became. You know, I was told. I believe. There is a difference between that and logically proving God's existence. He says what he presents here is not so much of this is how I think I came to an understanding of that. But how can one logically prove, beyond a shadow of a doubt, using logical tools, that God exists? So he's not so much making a personal faith statement as, here I have a logical proposition. Does that make sense? If he wants to give you his, his personal experience, it would probably look very different. That much I can, that much I can say very certainly. That changes that sort of question changes the dynamics of things a bit. Great questions. Well, some, what other observations or questions do you have regarding Descartes? So I, I don't know. It just seems like he's kind of contradictory to himself. How does he contradict? <sighs> it's just like I won't. You know, I have all these grand ideas. I can't express them. Because he, he, he starts that you have to doubt everything and anything. That's okay. how he starts, right? Okay. Yeah, to doubt clear. everything and anything. Okay. To find some truth. Okay. And if you doubt anything and everything, and then he comes around and says, I have a notion of a perfect God, and I also have an idea that a perfect God cannot be in the mind of a perfect God. How did he come to that? It had to, okay. it had to be, if you take it from the beginning, doubting everything.